Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's guided meditation and yoga practice. We will be recording today's session so that if you'd like to share it with a colleague or view it again at a later time, it will be made available on the EDWS YouTube page. The schedule for today's session will be guided meditation from approximately 12 until 1220. We'll then take a 10 minute break and return for the yoga portion of today's practice at 1230. As always, our guided meditation and yoga practice is led by Janet Weiss. And without further ado, I will turn things over to Janet for our guided meditation. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you were able to be here for meditation. Find a comfortable seat, or you can do your meditation supine, lying down, depending on the environment you inhabit at the moment. Take a few moments to get comfortable, make any kind of micro adjustments or micro movements that will maximize your comfort. Begin settling into your physical posture. So you're relaxed and alert. Let your eyelids rest sweetly and lightly over your eyes. And let your eyes begin to sink back. As if your eyes were receding all the way to your visual cortex at the back base of your brain, receding. And take this pause to transition from your outer world to your inner world. Just for these moments, letting the outer world and the digital world fall away from you now. No need to push it away. Just let it all fall away from you now. Like autumn leaves. And as you begin to attune and align with your inner world, Attune and align with your breathing, inviting your breathing to become more vivid. So you're connecting with the living process of your breathing. And invite, invite your breathing to soften and slow down, deepen and widen. So that your breathing is three dimensional, vertical, Horizontal and front to back. And as you breathe and as you settle inward, let your nervous system settle down. 
So your nerves and your nerve endings are bathing in your breathing. And as you breathe, as you enjoy the bliss, the gift of your own breathing, bring your focus to the center, center of your skull. And breathe spaciousness to your skull. So all the nooks and crannies and creases and crevices of your skull are broadening and expanding. All the channels and canals, web work of your skull are expanding. So you feel more spaciousness. Your, the fissures of your skull broaden at the top of that skull and the back of the skull and the base of the skull. Broaden across your brow, the big worry muscle. Let it smooth out. Let your worries all the way from you now, just for these moments. Anything that's worrisome or burdensome. Broaden and soften across your eyes, across your cheekbones. Soften your jaw joint. Soften your nostrils so you can feel the air, feel your breathing moving through your nostrils on your inhales and your exhales. It's a sensation. Soften your mouth, the corners of your mouth and your oral cavity, your gums and teeth and tongue. So your entire face and skull are spacious and your focus is right at the center. This is your, your brow point. This will call it your third eye or your mystical eye. And here at the center of your skull, imagine in your own unique way that you're looking at a screen. Like a movie theater screen. And a word appears on the screen. Whatever your intention conjures for you or intention. could be more than one word. And take a few moments and give it a, a positive tweak or an optimistic slant. And let this word or sequence of words drop downward to your throat. And let your throat have spaciousness. Let your throat, the circumference of your throat, broaden and widen. And this word or sequence of words 
morphs to a seed. And at your throat is the right, the human right, the universal right to speak. And then from your throat, this seed drools down to your heart center. And at your heart center, this seed becomes imbued with love, wisdom, and compassion. And pause here at your heart center with a potency and vitality of love, wisdom, and compassion. And then from your heart center, the seed flows downward to your lower rib cage. Your this is your fire vortex. And it's here at your fire vortex that the seed bathes in healthy willpower. It becomes imbued with the sublime. So you're bringing this seed, this word, this sequence of words down through the center of your being, the vortex of your being. Bathing now in healthy willpower. And the seed flows downward softly, simply downward. To the area of your navel cord. And this is your water vortex and the seed becomes imbued with water, the element of water, which helps it to grow.
and the seed continues onward down to your tailbone where it sends roots down into the earth. Connecting you with the good earth. With the soil and creativity. And fertility of the earth. And the earth sends. Upward to you. From this seed you've planted a golden. And you become imbued with this beautiful golden mist. And you contain it within your skull and skin boundaries. And it also surrounds you. outside of your skull and skin boundaries. And this golden mist transforms into golden light. Pause and become imbued with this golden light, the potency and vitality, this golden light. And this golden light transforms into pure light, the pure light of your awareness, the pure light of your consciousness. And the pure light that surrounds you. Rest here, breathe here, absorbing and receiving this pure light. It will close with the sound of a bell. Let the sound of the bell flow through your pure mind of awareness. Namaste. All right. Thank you, everyone. We will now take a short 10 minute break and we'll return at 1230 for the chair yoga portion of today's practice.
Greetings. Welcome to the postural part of yoga practice or welcome back if you were able to attend the meditation. We'll begin the postural portion today with a, a mudra. It's called the Sanmukti. And so you're going to, very simple, you're going to bring your thumbs to your ear flaps called your tragus, it's the anatomical name, and you're going to close them or press them towards your inner ear and then touch your pinkies just over your hairline. And then the rest of the fingers rest on your skull. And so we'll do say in Mukti to turn inward, taking a few moments to close the gates of the senses, attuned to breathing. Allowing your breathing to soften and deepen. Smooth. The way you breathe when you're asleep. And then from San Mukti, we'll do meditating with empty hands. So you touch your finger pads and thumb pads together and your palms not together. And you bring that to your brow point or your third eye where your brow converges. Hold a few moments here. This is your, your witness, your command center. So from here, you can observe your entire yoga practice, tuning in to what parts feel alive, what parts feel numb, what parts feel tense and tight. And then from here, we'll go to Lotus Mudra, where you keep your pinkies and thumbs touching and the rest of your fingers bloom out like a flower. And you bring your thumbs to your, your throat. as if you were holding a light bulb. This light bulb is infusing you with light and energy, vitality, potency, and then locking your thumbs, latching your thumbs so your palms face outward, and bring your palms over your, your heart center at your breastbone, your sternum. And hold here. and direct connect with your breathing heart. And from here, we'll add some sounding. 
So bring your arms to cactus. And this is Baha Ra. Ra is love power. And then Maha Ya, which is heart waves. And Ma Ha Ha, which is life force. So Ma Ha Ya, Ma Ha Ra, Ma Ha Ya, Ma Ha Ha. Let's do it one more time. Ma Ha Ya, Ma Ha Ra, Ma Ha Ya, Ma Ha Ha. And leave your arms vertical, palms facing each other. This is seated upward hands. And if you're in a chair that has rollers, as I am, please be very cautious and mindful about the wheels. So shoulders drop down away from your ears towards your waistband and arms reach, 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 rising up. Palms facing, finger stumps energized, and then we'll go to sunlighting. So you touch your ring and thumb fingers together and the middle and index touch and extend and your pinky extends and then you arc toward the sky excuse me receiving The fire, light, and energy of the sun. Unlocking your receptivity. And then bring your hands to your shoulders. You may need to sit forward just a little bit. This is cardinal pose, the wings of a cardinal our beautiful red bird. So you press your elbows back, drop your shoulders, expand your chest, broaden across your chest, lift your heart, full inhale, full generous inhale, and then hold your wings, elbows aim toward each other or touch, and exhale. Inhale, elbows back. Icing up. And then fold, exhale. And then come back to center, elbows lateral. Again, you may need to scoot up depending on what chair, what kind of chair you're sitting on. And then spiral right and left. Gentle little spiral. Not too much range of motion, but getting your spine moving. Centrally. And then from here, you're going to extend your arms like you're reaching for the sky. And then bringing that cosmic power to your belly and to your heart, touching your belly and your heart with your palms. And then reaching once again, 
And this time bringing your palms to your heart. And your head in yoga called your heart mind. So you're harnessing the eyes of your heart. And the eyes of your head. And connecting them, harnessing them together. And then bring your hands to the sides of your chair, or if you have arms, the, the arms of your chair. And then bring your left arm across, strong left arm by your left hand, or side lift. So feeling a nice lengthening and extension on your left side body. From your left hip to your left hand. And then to Moon Mudra. So bringing your palm to the crown of your head, focusing at the crease of your left elbow. If that hurts your neck in any way, look directly ahead. That's perfectly fine. Coming imbued with the reflective light of the moon. And then let's try the other side with those two poses. Right arm across your right ear, strong through your right arm. Wonderful extension from your right hip to your right hand. Place your right shoulder downward away from your right ear. Breathe through your right side body as if there were a, a channel there and you're breathing through that channel. And then, Moon Mudra, bring the palm of your hand to your crown, the crown of your head, and either looking straight ahead or at the crease of your right elbow. So your the moon reflects to you your own inward beauty. And then come back to center. And from here, you're going to latch on to your shin, or you can latch on under your thigh bone, whichever one is best for you. If doable, you may want to go ahead and plant the heel on the chair. And then you're going to inhale, lift through your spine. Exhale, fold the forehead to knee. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. One last time. Inhale, lift. Exhale. And then from here, bring your hands under your thigh bone. And we're going to go to um, Kronkasana, or it's a leg extension. It's a fishing bird. So, assisting by latching on under your thigh bone and then extend the right leg, get as much extension as you can, and then release. And just do one more. I know the legs are heavy. And extend. Keep your breathing moving. And release. Right. And then lower. And then we'll do the, the same thing with the left leg. So either latch on to the shin bone 
or if you can touch on underneath the thigh bone. If doable, go ahead, prop the heel, plant the heel on the chair. Do the one that's best for you for now. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Last one, inhale, lift. Excellent. And then come back to center vertical. Back to one under the thigh bone and we'll go to Heron pose. All these poses have several names. So when you get your signal, extend the leg and release. Just one more, extend the leg. And, and then lower your leg. I'm going to sweep the arms overhead, inhale. And then on the exhale, we're gonna fold the torso over the legs for child's In folding, gathering in your towards your heart, letting your back expand as you breathe. And then from child's pose, reach your arms out as far as you can, maybe a little bit beyond comfort. But under the edge of pain, or you'll get your dress. Can go ahead and touch the floor or not, either way. And then we'll go to spine roll. So curl through your spine, one vertebra at a time, like you're climbing stairs. All the way vertical. Then you're going to lift your right leg again, and we'll do the hip opener. So hang on to your shin, try to leave your knee alone. And then you're going to open the right leg out to the right ladder. So you're opening your hip socket and then bring it back. And then try that just one more time, opening the right hip socket, bringing the right leg to the right lateral, and then bringing it back. And then half cross the leg. The right leg over the left, and then bring your right heel as close to your left hip socket as you safely can. Here is fun. But wherever works best for you. And this is half lotus. And so we're going to start with half lotus fold. So take your upper body and release it over your right leg. Release the weight of your head. Nice traction on the back of your neck. Tension, upper body tension, shift. And then come back to vertical. Then we're going to inverse that and arc back, broad shoulders. Broad crush your clavicles. Lots of breathing. 
and the commence. Then take your left palm to your right knee. Bring your right arm and latch it on the chair at some point, either the back of the chair or the arm of the chair, if you have one, or the side of the chair. And then spiral, look over your right shoulder, lots of uplift through your spine. And then from here, hold right here, look over your front shoulder. Chin level to the ground and look over your back shoulder. And then come back to center. And plant the right leg foot down and then same thing left. Let's start with the hip opener. So latch on to your left shin under your left knee. And then you're going to bring the left knee to the left lateral and then bring it back. Working with the hip socket. Left knee lateral. Hip opener left and then bring it back. And then take the left leg, cross it over and again, feel free to adjust yourself in your chair as needed. You can have cross as much as is safely doable. Bring your left heel towards your right hip socket for half lotus. And we'll start with half lotus fold. So resting your upper body over your left leg. Let your back expand. And stay with your breathing moment by moment by moment. And then come back to center and arc high and back, broad across your shoulders, broad across your clavicles here. Clavicles, collarbones. And then come back to center and then bring your right palm to your left knee and spiral. Look over your left shoulder. Again, latching onto the chair wherever you best can. Lots of uplift through your spine. Lots of breathing, more than you need, more than you're used to. And then with your neck and head, look over your front shoulder, your right shoulder. And the chin is parallel to the ground. And then look over your back shoulder. And then come back to center and plant your left foot down. And we're going to uh, lift the standing here in just a moment. So we do standing poses and chair yoga, not too, too much sitting. And then um, rest your arms down by your sides for sitting mountain. So nice and strong and stable on your hips and through your feet, grounding like the base of a mountain. And then ascending through your spine, the crown of your head is your summit. And then from here, trying to use the strength of your, your legs and your, your gluteals, uh, if doable, use your hands if needed. Lift to standing now. Arms by your sides. This is also called Samasetahi and Tadasana. So take a few moments here breathing and connecting with your verticality.
and then be sure your chair is behind you, right behind you, and return to sitting now. Lots of that centered through your spine. Shoulders drop. They want to bounce them a little bit, make sure they're not holding too much tension. And then again, focusing on the strength in your legs and gluteals. Use your arms and hands as needed. And lift to standing now. Okay, from Standing Mountain, we're going to go to Monkey Pose. So, left hand massages the left side body, and the right hand drops down the right leg. And we keep that moving. Right hand massages the right side body. Left hand drops down the leg. So this is such a wonderful pose because not only do you get a side stretch, but you also get in yoga what's called abhyanga, which is self-massage. So you're getting to massage your right body, right side body, and left side. Let's do one more each way. And also the lateral motion of your spine. And then we'll go to swinging twists. Let's go with empty coat sleeves. Or the Sanskrit name, Hashtinasana. Nice and loose. Get, be sure and give yourself a tap. And then bring your left palm to the front of your heart and your right palm to the back of your heart. And take a few moments to hold and support your own heart. And acknowledge that you are holding someone. And that the good earth is holding you. And then from here, bring your arms overhead, palm spacing, and this is standing up legs, just like we did for chair. And from here, you're going to touch your feet together and the inseams of your legs together, and you're going to lace your first three fingers, your index point skyward, your thumbs point back for temple pose. We'll close your eyes a few moments so that you can inhabit your temple, occupy your temple. Your spine is the center of your temple. And your temple is the vehicle for your joy. Body temple. And then from temple, squeeze on your glutes, squeeze on your thigh muscles, and you're going to arc back to swan pose. You feel a nice extension over your vertical abs. Be sure you're breathing. And then come back to center. And then side lift to the right, standing side lift. And side lift.
and then come back to center. And you're going to swan dive over your legs. So you can hold on to wherever best works for you, your calves, your ankles. You can bend your knees if you need to and touch the ground. You can let your arms around your lower legs. Either way, release your the weight of your head, loosen your neck, and let your spine decompress. And then bend your knees as much as you can and rest your chest on your thigh bones. Use your hands to help ground you. And then come back to vertical. And then broad mount your base and then curl through the spine. Curl through the spine. All the way. And then from here, we're going to go to chair pose, Utkatasana, it's called. So, make sure your chair is directly behind you. And you're going to sit your hips back like you're sitting down to the chair, as closely to the chair as you can, but you're not sitting down. So, this is a squat pose. Reach your arms by your ears directly in front. Your palms can face the ground or they can face each other, whichever you prefer. And then come back to vertical. We'll do that just one more time. So great lower body. Stabilizer, strengthener, wonderful pose for grounding, feeling the strength of your legs and the Connection of your feet to the earth. And then come back to mountain pose. And then this time really do sit yourself down. And then from here, we're going to go to churning, which is Taking your torso full circle, so you're going to step your legs out lateral. And you're going to, you can do a small circle or a large circle. Whatever feels best for you now. And keep your torso. Moving. And then reverse the direction. And then come back to center. And we're going to keep our legs lateral here. And we're going to go to Fierce Goddess. So you're going to bring your arms to Cactus Pose. This is Cactus Pose. And you're going to make soft fists with both hands. And then this has a sounding of a mantra that goes with it. Tongue goes out. Lion. When you bring your arms, you inhale. When you bring your arms back to cactus. 
and roar and exhale when you reach forward. One more time. And then bring your legs back and feet back to parallel. And from here, let's do, um, let's do breath of joy. So it's three inhales, one exhale, and when you exhale, you release your upper body over your legs. So here are the three inhales. Inhale, 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 exhale, release. Inhale, 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 exhale, release. One more. Inhale, 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 exhale, release. And from here, let's go to um, chair sun salute. Surya Namaskar. So it's going to be inhale. It's very simple. Just follow along. Inhale. Exhale. Flatten your back and prop your palms on your thigh bones. So your your spine is like a sliding board. And then you're going to inhale and arc back. Eyes skyward. And then on your exhale, you're going to fall forward over your legs. Let's try that a couple more times. Inhale, overhead. Sun salute. Exhale, pop your palms on your thigh bones and flatten your back. Inhale toward the sky, salutations to the sun. And exhale, fall over your legs. This time, inhale. Exhale, flat back. Inhale, greet the sun. Exhale, fall. And spiral to vertical. And then from here, you're probably going to need to bring yourself all the way to the edge of your chair and flex the right leg, turn the right leg lateral, and extend the left leg. So you're going to do warrior two. If you're on wheels, be careful. We're going to do war, uh, warrior. This is warrior two pose. So bring your focus over your right arm. Right leg is flexed, left leg is extended. And laser focus out beyond your middle finger. So this is your laser focus is called Drishti. Warrior two pose is Virabhadrasana. And then from here, rest your forearm on your thigh bone and reach your left arm by your left ear. And this is extended side angle. And then you're going to do the same thing over the extended leg. And this is revolved for you. Strong right arm by your right ear, reaching away from your right leg. 
It's called Vaparitan Virapatras. And then come back to center. All right, and then bring both legs feet parallel. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Those three poses. So step your left leg out lateral, extend your right leg, extend both your arms for warrior two pose, bring your focus over your left arm, left leg is fixed, and bring your focus, laser focus out beyond your middle finger. Holding up your inner warrior. To fight your inner battles. And then rest your left forearm on your left thigh bone and bring your right arm across your right ear for extended lateral ankle. So you have a long line of energy from your left toes to your left fingers. And then let's reverse the side lift, rest your right arm, rest hand, rest your right hand and your right arm on your right leg and bring your left arm by your left ear, left shoulder down, or revolved warrior your two bones. And then come back to center. And then bring your legs back and your feet back to parallel. Then from here, you're going to lift to standing. And you're going to widen out your base so your, your legs and feet are broader than your hips. And then you bring your hands to your waistband and are kind of back. So heart opening. Anahatasa. And then come back to center. Extend your arms out lateral. And we'll go to standing wide angle. So flatten your back. And then onward to standing wide angle. And then return to flat back. And return to vertical. And then release your arms. And then from here, you're going to turn your toes out. And your arms come back to lateral for standing five pointed star. So the five points of the star are symbolic. They represent heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And they also symbolize the five elements. So bringing the fingertip pads and the thumb pads together and they all touch. This is 
Hakini Rudra. So acknowledging the five elements are flowing through you now. And each one of our fingers symbolizes one of the elements. The thumbs are fire. Feel that flowing through you. The index is air, the air you breathe. The middle is space, ether. The ring finger is earth, and the pinky is water. And then come back to Tarasana, five pointed star. And then bend both your knees, knees out lateral, and then bring your elbows and your upper arms towards touching your rib cage. And then slightly twist to the right. You won't get much range of motion. And then slightly twist to the left. This is horse pose, also called God's pose. And then come back to twist. And then release your hands and step your feet and legs parallel. Then we're going to take a few moments here to balance. So step over to the right side of your chair and use your left hand to assist you with your balance. So starting with knee lift. forward and upward that will help you. And then bring the right knee out to the right side. If you need to, just hold right here. This is practicing your balance. And that's what this segment is for, to practice your balance. If doable, go ahead, open the hip socket to the right, and then Catch your ankle and bring the sole of your foot to the inseam of your left thigh. If that's not doable, you can do kickstand pose where you touch your toes to the ground. And bring your hand to your hand, your right hand, or by your right ear, whichever you prefer. If doable, go ahead with your tree pose. Fricks us. And again, you can reach toward the sky with your right hand. Or you can bring your right hand to your heart. And then give it a little test. Lift your left hand off the chair. Test your balance, even for a momentary second. And then release your right arm and release your leg. Then you're going to actually face the right side of the chair and use the chair to support your upper body. And you're going to take your right leg and extend it directly back. So you, you load your left leg and your right leg extends back. So it's like your spine and your right hip and your right leg, your neck and your head are all on one level plane. If this is where your three pose. And then lower the right leg. And then bring yourself over to the left side of your chair, and we'll do those poses 
with the left side of the chair. So now using your right hand to assist you and knee lift. Again, you can hold your balance right here with knee lift. If doable, go ahead, rotate the left hip socket open and the left knee to the left side. And then catch the left ankle and place the sole of the left foot on the inseam of the right thigh. If that's not doable, you can do kickstand pose where you use your toes to help you balance. Use your toes against the ground. Right arm by your right, left arm by your left ear, sorry. Or to your heart, whichever you prefer. If doable, go ahead and place the sole of your foot on the inseam of your thigh bone. This is Rixos on the tree pose. And then you may want to test your balance. Momentarily, just to check in. Put your rib cage forward and high. That will help you. And be sure you breathe. And then release your left arm. And release your left arm. Then face the left side of the chair. And use the chair to support your upper body. And when you get your signal, lift your left leg back for warrior three pose. Lots of extension through your left leg like a bolt of lightning. And level your the back of your head, your neck, your spine, your left hip, and your left leg. If they're all on one level, please. And then release your left leg. And return to the front of your chair. And sit yourself down to your chair. Okay, and from here, let us do, let's do breath of fire. So your arms overhead for your inhale. And then for your exhale, you jut your elbows down and make a soft fist. So it's, and your inhales and your exhales are forced your nostrils. Let's change the arms a little bit. And one more time to change the arms. Nice time. I'm going to need a, a tissue after that breathing on the yama, it's called. So from here, we're going to do a very simple mantra and similar to Breath of Fire. Ha! 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 And then relax. 
physically close your eyes just a few moments and be receptive. Receive the pause. And the sensation and the vibration. And the potency of your breathing. All right, and let's return to San Mukti, how we started, where you press your tragas, your ear flaps, toward your ear canal. Bring your pinkies touching at right at your hairline, and the rest of your fingers rest on your skull. Let your body breathe. And then from San Mukti, we're going to bring the breathing to begin our closing to a Tibet breathing where your fingers tuck underneath your arms and your thumbs point skyward. Where you can actually feel your body breathe. Feel your chest breathing. On your inhale, it rises and expands and lifts toward the sky. And on your exhale, it drops and sinks and narrows toward the earth. Inhale, chest lifts. Shoulders lift. Exhale, chest drops. Shoulders drop. And then see if you can let your breathing penetrate all the way down to your belly, all the way to your guts. Soften your belly and let it breathe. Get vitality to your abdominal organs. Let's do a few more Tibetan breathing breaths. And then rest your arms down to your thigh bones. Palms down is for grounding. And you can do this closing Shavasana either way. Palms up is for receptivity. So do the one that's best for you, or you can do a combination. Let your eyelids rest sweetly and lightly over your eyes. Your eyes recede. Noticing if there's any difference internally for you, having moved through all of those Asnas, mudras, your breath, breathing may feel more expansive.
your body may feel more spacious. You may feel more physically grounded. Bathe in those sensations. Be receptive to those sensations. Expansive, spacious, grounded. Letting your body breathe. And we'll close with the sound of the bells. Let the sounds flow through you expansively and spaciously. Namaste. Thank you everyone for attending today's guided meditation and chair yoga practice. And thank you as always to Janet Weiss for leading us through that practice. Keep an eye out in your email. You'll be receiving, receiving a link to a short survey as well as a link to today's recording. Uh, that recording will be made available on our EDWS YouTube page along with several of our other event recordings. With that being said, we hope you have a great rest of your day and a relaxing weekend.